we all sing to hymns and songs but have you ever wondered what the story behind that song or hymn is the hymn stories are a series in which the project kog tries to reveal the story behind the hymn so that listeners might try to connect it to the author's circumstances and sing it even more passionately than before glorifying our lord the hymn that we have taken in this video is what a friend we have in jesus and surely this is a song we have all related to at some point in our lives if we grew up around church or gospel music we can probably at least sing the chorus joseph scriven was a son of a captain in the british royal marines he was born in 1819 he had wealth education a devoted family and a pleasant life in his native country of ireland After receiving his university degree from Trinity College in London, he enrolled in a military college to prepare for an army career. However, poor health forced him to give up that ambition. Joseph then quickly established himself as a teacher, fell in love and made plans to settle in his hometown. Life was good for Joseph. Then the unexpected happened. On the night before Scriven's scheduled wedding, his fiance drowned the grief was more than he could bear so joseph moved to canada to start over moving near clinton in huron county in 1855 he read the bible to railway construction workers who were building the grand trunk railway across canada west by 1857 he relocated to beulieu supporting himself as a private tutor to the family of robert lampert pengley a retired naval officer he established a home in port hope where he met and fell in love with elisa rice and planned to be married again it is unthinkable that you could lose so much in one young life but just few weeks before she was to become joseph scriven's bride she suddenly grew sick within a matter of weeks elisa scriven's second fiance also died a shattered scriven turned to the only thing that had angered him during his life his faith through prayer and bible study he found not just solace but a mission the 25 year old scriven dramatically changed his lifestyle he took a vow of poverty sold all of his earthly possessions and vowed to give his life to the physically handicapped and financially destitute often he would give away his clothes and possessions to those in need and he worked without pay for anyone who needed him scriven became known as the good samaritan of port hope that looks like a sober man i think i'll hire him to cut wood for me that was said of a man on the streets of lake rice canada as he walked along carrying a wood saw and a saw horse the response from a man nearby was that is joseph scriven he wouldn't cut wood for you because you can afford to hire him He only cuts wood for those who don't have the money enough to pay. That seemed to be the philosophy and attitude of Scriven, a devoted member of Plymouth Brethren Church. He had a sincere desire to help those who were truly destitute. Hymnologist Albert Bailey noted that Scriven, a selfless person by nature, was known as the man who sows wood for poor widows and sick people who were unable to pay. Ten years after Eliza died, Scriven received the words that his mother had become very ill. Because he wore poverty, Joseph did not have the money to go home to help care for her. Heartsick and feeling a need to reach out to her, he wrote a comforting letter, enclosing the words of his newly written poem with a prayer that these brief lines would remind her of a never-failing friend she had in Jesus. and it has since comforted encouraged and uplifted generations sometime later when joseph scriven himself became ill a friend who came to call on him happened to see a copy of words scribbled on a scratched piece of paper near his bed after reading the scribbled words the friend asked who wrote these beautiful words scriven replied the lord and i did it between us Scriven had never intended that anyone else should see it. Ironically, Joseph Scriven drowned in a Canadian lake in 1886.
he did not live to see his song carry to every corner of the globe nor could he have ever imagined that we would be talking about him and those scribbled words today two monuments have been erected in his honor each has the first stanza of his song engraved on it charles conwell an attorney and a composer wrote the musical setting used today we are living in crazy times but no matter what may be happening in our lives know that there is always someone ready to meet with us and bring comfort matter of fact jesus loves all of us so much and that he proved it by dying for us john 15:13 it says greater love has no one than this that he lay down his life for his friends may the song turn your attention to the greatest friend of all time thank you for listening the project kyoji and god bless you all